So we're going to have a little look today at Autodesk Buzzsaw, Autodesk Vault, and um, Factory Design Suite to see how we can get um, external contractors, potentially in this case from an architectural point of view, to collaborate with internal designers um, who are using Autodesk Vault. So Autodesk Vault is an internal data management solution, um, but you wouldn't ever give external access to your Vault for obvious reasons, because it contains a lot of IP um, and, and sensitive data. Autodesk Buzzsaw, on the other hand, is a cloud-based data management solution, which we can configure to, um, to talk to and synchronize with Autodesk Vault to allow external contractors um, or external sources to view, collaborate, or work with um, internal designers. So we're going to have a little look at that configuration today using Factory Design Suite, just because it's nice to see a file going from Buzzsaw to Vault to AutoCAD, synchronized with Inventor, back to Buzzsaw, AutoCAD change, back to Vault, back to AutoCAD, back to Inventor. So it's quite a complex um, workflow that is following there. Before we get uh, into that, we're just going to have a little look at Buzzsaw as a brief overview. Um, it's relatively simple as a, as a system. It's, it's like most cloud-based um, file sharing applications. Um, but it's got some quite nice things in there like workflows. I'm, I'm on Buzzsaw Professional in this instance. Um, we can see we've got no data at the minute. We've got a, um, a site, an empty project, and an empty folder. Just to show you what we can do um, inside of Buzzsaw, I'm just going to create a, um, go into this project. For this project, I'm just going to select it and go up to Project Setup. When we go into um, Buzzsaw Professional, we have the ability to create projects with all this kind of information. The most important one for me with Buzzsaw Professional is the ability to create workflows or business processes directly inside of Buzzsaw. For this uh, example today, I'm not running through any approval processes. Uh, we want to just show you the base functionality. Um, but just to show you what we can do, I'm going to come in and show you that you can add a number of workflows. For example, let's add an approval process. We can then go on to configure that approval process should you want to, to choose who the creators are, who the responders are, who's um, um, got permissions to do things within that um, within that business process. Just to show you some of the other ones, we've got submittals. Again, each business process has its own configuration, and they are all completely customizable to choose who, in this case, the creator is, who's the gatekeeper, who's the consultant, who's responding so on and so forth. So you've got some really powerful workflows there which are just out of the box in Buzzsaw Professional and we can assign um, to any Buzzsaw project in order to put them um, and run them on any Buzzsaw file. In this case today we're not going to run through any, we'll leave that through another session, um, but you can run very in-depth Buzzsaw um, business processes should you want to. In this case we've just got a completely blank um, uh, Buzzsaw project and all we're going to do um, is we're going to upload something into that Buzzsaw project and start working with Vault and Buzzsaw. So just to set the scene a little bit I'm going to play um, a couple of roles today. I'm going to be an external architect um, who is going to be designing a factory building within AutoCAD architecture. I'm going to be uploading that into Dropbox and sending it on to um, my client who is um, a customer needing a factory. They're going to receive that file inside of Autodesk Vault directly from Buzzsaw. They're going to open that file up again in AutoCAD Architecture but for Factory Design Suite and be able to make their design factory, um, sorry, create their factory design directly from the architect's design. So let's just jump straight in. 
and just have a little look at the vault configuration. We've got Project Sync with Vault Professional. Project Sync is what's uh, synchronizing between Buzzsaw and Vault. I've added my site inside of Buzzsaw, uh, inside of Vault, sorry. Just to show you the synchronization settings, there's not loads of options. It's basically, would you like a data drop daily at a specific time? Continuous data drops or manual data drops? Generally, for this case, we're going to go for manually. But dependent on um, the standards that you're working to, particularly if you're working around BIM, you might need to do daily data drops or even continuous data drops. Deletion settings, generally, we would recommend do not allow deletion of vault data. Whatever happens in Buzzsaw, we want to keep our vault data intact. Alongside this, the, uh, the site settings, we've also got synchronization settings to say that I have a fault folder with inside of Vault and a folder with inside of Buzzsaw that I would like to synchronize. So let's go and play the role of the architect. I'm going to open a file with inside of AutoCAD Architecture. With this file, I'm just going to make a couple of changes. Uh, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm not overly um, worried about the actual accuracy of this file today. Um, we're just here to show you a little bit of basic functionality. So let's say something about there is absolutely fine. Let's just put some, uh, some rough overall external dimensions on. Just to get an idea. Let's just put one on the opening there as well. Absolutely fine. Just going to make my uh, command line a little bit bigger. Not quite sure why it's decided to uh, go absolutely tiny on me. Um, so that that there we go. We're happy with that. So I'm just going to hit save. And I'm going to close that down. So from the architect's point of view, I have done an AutoCAD drawing. I'm going to take that drawing. And I'm going to do a drag and drop directly into Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw will pick up the file that you're adding, allow you to add one or multiple files at the same time. It will also allow me to include additional folders. So allow me to pick references. So for example, if I had a, um, a, a PDF file that I had attached to this, it would allow me to pick the references and choose what I would like to add. In this case, I'm going to leave everything as default and click Next. I have the ability to add comments. So let's just say um, initial upload, uh, initial design of factory building. We have the ability to add comment to a new discussion to create a discussion around the file. But essentially, this will become the version description. I could then go a step further and send an email directly from Buzzsaw. Generally, inside of Buzzsaw, you'll have notifications set up, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So as soon as something changes within a file or on a file or in a folder or a project within Buzzsaw, you'll be notified straight away. I'm not going to send an email. I'm just going to press Finish. And that file will be uploaded directly into Buzzsaw. Just takes a couple of seconds to upload, dependent on your internet connection, obviously. I'm just going to right click and just show you that if you wanted to, you could start off notifications very easily to say that I want notifications on a daily basis, as a daily summary, or immediately as soon as you receive a change. For example, as soon as this architectural layout is uploaded, I could immediately receive an email from Buzzsaw to say, hey, the architect's uploaded a, a, a new version of the architectural model. Please log in and have a look. It's worth pointing out that we're currently sat inside the thick client on Buzzsaw. We do have a thin client, which is web-based and browser-based. I'll show you that in just a second. The thick client is generally easier for administration tasks. If you're just uploading documents, it's, uh, it's a lot quicker just to use the um, thin client. So if we just open up Internet Explorer, 
just go to the bus or login page. I've got the ability to come on here and log in. Just to com um, compare the two, we have thick client on the left and thin client on the right. You see they look very similar. Let's just go full screen on the thin client. We can see that we can go into a folder. You can see we have a folder, uh, a file here. Okay, that file we can pick up. It's currently generating a preview, which can take some time depending on the size of that file. But as you can see, this specific file has a number of bits of information. It has some generic information about the file. It tells us that it's actually unlocked for editing, so someone can come on and edit this. We also have the ability to go in and look at older versions. We'll come back and look at this in a second to see how these versions upload. We can view or even edit that online using AutoCAD 360 or download it to our local workspace. The Thin Client will work on pretty much all browsers, whether you're using Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer or Firefox. Um, that means because it works on Chrome and um, Safari, pretty much any mobile device, whether it's an iPad, um, a Galaxy tablet, an Android device or any iOS device, um, Buzzsaw will work and will um, work well through that thin client. I'm just going to go across into Vault now and play the role of the internal factory layout designer. We can see that we've got uh, our folder set up, but it's currently empty. Remember that I set um, Project Sync to do a manual synchronization. So I just need to press Sync now to tell it to manually sync because um, I'm running everything off my local laptop, I just need to start my job processor. Project Sync does need to use job processor for its synchronizations, whether you're doing manual, continuous, or daily syncs. And it's worth pointing out that job processor does consume a Vault license. So if it's not running on a machine that already has a license out, it will consume a Vault license while it runs. That synchronization is done. I can do a refresh and see that I now have an architectural layout inside of my workspace. I'm going to choose to get the architectural layout and download it. And we can now see that that file is residing in my local workspace. Let's just go and have a look inside my Vault workspace. Just get rid of these old files that you don't need. Go into architecture, and we can see that we have our architectural layout DWG. What we're going to do is, from a, a factory layout perspective, we're going to open up Factory Design Suite's AutoCAD architecture, and we're going to choose that we want to start a new drawing. From here, I'm going to XREF in our architect drawing. I don't want to use it directly, I want to XREF it. So let's make sure I'm picking it up from my Vault workspace. So I'm picking up the vaulted file. I'm going to XREF it in with standard options and locate it at 00. zero. It picks up that it's vaulted and it picks up all of the locations as you would expect. So there's my factory layout or my factory um, building sat within AutoCAD Architecture. I'm just going to make sure that I'm logged into Vault which I am indeed, and we're going to go to our factory tab. If you haven't got it open, we're going to open our asset browser. It's already here on the left-hand side. And we're just going to add a couple of bits of information. Let's just add a, a, a Mazak CNC machine in here. Somewhere around there is absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and add maybe some conveyors. And again, for this example, we're just doing some very, very basic functionality. We're not worried on doing an overly um, complicated factory layout. We're literally just going to be throwing together um, a couple of bits of information just to show you the process behind this uh, buzzsaw vault integration. So let's just put a couple of conveyors on here. 
just using the very intuitive um, connection uh, or connectors, sorry, inside the factory design suite, these little green blobs. Um, so we've got a, a machine, a conveyor system. Let's just go back up and let's just uh, add a bit of material handling in here. Let's just add a container and then just maybe a racking system. There we go, something like that would be fine. And let's put that around about there. We can instantly see that there's a problem. Okay. Racking system is obviously too big for the building. It's almost like there's a deliberate mistake there. Um, but we're just going to place that where it was. And we're going to do a round trip. So from here, I'm going to save this file. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to save that into my Vault workspace. as factory layout, hit save, and I'm going to choose that I would like to synchronize that with Inventor. So sync Inventor, it's just going to say it needs to close the current document, so I'm going to say OK. It's going to ask me to make sure that all files are checked out because I'm logged into Vault. I'm just going to say yes, absolutely fine, do what you need to do. With a bit of luck, this will go away and it will start synchronizing with Inventor. As you can see, the factory layout and the architectural layout both start synchronizing. The reason the architectural layout is slightly grayed out is because it's originally from an X-Ray. The way that factories work in the background, you essentially have 2D assets which are linked to 3D assets. It puts in the AutoCAD DWG as kind of an overlay slash underlay and it will place the 3D assets directly on top of their 2D counterparts. So we can instantly see that there's been a bit of an issue here. Um, we need to clearly make the building bigger. Uh, we've got future plans for this area over here, so we can't move the racking. We do actually need to make the building bigger. Uh, before we go any further, we're just going to make a couple of changes in Inventor just to show the full workflow. So let's just open up our asset browser in Inventor. And let's just grab a safety fence and just put a couple of uh, safety fences in here just to show the, uh, the configuration. That'll be fine. Let's just save once more and synchronize back to AutoCAD. It will take whatever we've added or whatever we've changed, create the 2D and allow you to open it and view it directly inside of AutoCAD. If we wanted to, we could change it further inside of AutoCAD and sync it back to Inventor. In this case, AutoCAD crashes, typically, um, usually pretty stable. Let's just do uh, a save inside of Inventor and just do another synchronize into AutoCAD. So we've synchronized back with AutoCAD. We're just gonna go uh, and make sure we check this into Vault. Just make sure we're logged in. Once we're logged in, we're just going to say we want to check this DWG into Vault. It picks up the factory layout and the architectural layout, the X-Ref. Let's just give them some comments. Before I press the button, I'm going to go across and do the same thing inside of Inventor. So it's just going to say that it's recommended you open the AutoCAD layouts in AutoCAD and check them in. We're already in the process of doing that, so I'm going to check it in. Generally, I'll always check in the Inventor factory files first before the AutoCAD files just to um, stop any issues from occurring. So they're now checked in. If we go across to Vault uh, and do a little refresh, we can see that we've got both our 3D layouts
we have the 2D layouts and the full factory layout in 3D. Like so. We've obviously got an issue with the, uh, the walls and the um, racking system here. So what we need to do is we need to get this information back to the designer. So there would probably be a phone call or, or, or certainly a phone call and maybe a follow-up email. Um, but generally we would sync inside of Vault, which again generally would be an automatic process. It's only manual on my machine because I'm running um, from my laptop. Uh, so rather than leaving job processor running all the time, I'm just doing it manually as and when required. Essentially, this will just take a couple of seconds to sync, and that synchronization will be back over to um, to Vault, uh, Buzzsaw. Sorry, the files will be back live inside of Buzzsaw. So if we flip back over to Buzzsaw, just make sure we've got nothing open in AutoCAD to avoid any confusion. I'm now playing the role of the architect, external architect, once more. Um, so this architect would receive a notification again, of course, um, both from a physical discussion, I guess, with the factory designer, but they'd receive a notification from Buzzsaw the second that Buzzsaw updates with that new file. You can see that not only have we synchronized them the 2D data, we've also synchronized them the 3D data as well from Inventor. We can customize these synchronizations to um, to choose what happens, and also we can customize the uh, the security settings directly inside of Buzzsaw to control what people can and cannot access or can or cannot see. So, as the architect, I'm going to grab the layout. I'm going to download it, include the references, press OK. That's going to open the file or download the file, sorry, locally to my local workspace as the architect. Again, I'm going to open up AutoCAD, grab the architectural layout, and make a change. We know that there was an issue up here, so let's go ahead um, and just make a really quick change. Again, we are not worrying at all about being accurate for this specific example, so we're just going to make this much bigger. Maybe we'll also just make it a little bit skinnier. Like so. As well as that, we're just going to preempt that even though we've made it a little bit bigger, um, we're kind of going to need to make that entrance a little bit wider as well. So based on that, we're going to save it. Directly from Bustle, I shall show you the um, web client now. Let's just do a little refresh just inside of Internet Explorer just to show you the workflow from a web client perspective. We've downloaded and we're working on this file. Okay. We've already got it downloaded. We can look at the versions. We now have two versions, one by me, one by Vault. I can say upload new version. Select documents, it's not quite as slick. I have to come down and select it manually. It's still a very powerful workflow, but it's not quite as slick as with the standard client. We pick the file, we say upload or notify an upload to upload and notify someone at the same time. I'm just going to do an upload. As you can see, it's very quick. Once again, that version will be changed. The preview will take a little while to generate, unfortunately. Um, but again, you can view or edit that file online using AutoCAD 360. Generally, at this point, we're going to go back into Vault, and we're going to do a refresh, followed by a sync. Once again, in my case, I'm just going to manually start my synchronization process. This is not what you would normally do. It would normally be completely automatic. Just going to take a couple more seconds. Let's just exit that now and do another further refresh. We should now have the latest version of the architectural layout. We can see that by the fact that our version is now out of date. So let's get that version from the vault. We don't need to check it out. Just download it 
And from there, we're going to go and open our factory layout in AutoCAD. Would you like to check it out? Yes, I would, because I might need to update it. And we can see that instantly that's picked up all the changes. Let's just open inside of Inventor as well. So this time we're going to go into Inventor. We're just going to um, make a couple of changes here. Just going to say that we'd like to check in, uh, sorry, check out the files ready to work on. And then in here we're just going to make a couple of changes. So we need to pick up our racking and move that into position. We need to pick up our machine and our conveyor system and move that into a more likely position. Let's say somewhere around there is pretty good. Snapping systems just move me slightly off track there. There we go. And let's pick up our safety fence. And again, we're going to move that into a more appropriate position, like so. Let's just add another couple of assets on the end here. Um, if you wanted to, you could do a copy paste, or we can simply come across and drag more assets in from the asset browser. Um, whichever you prefer, I'm just going to do a standard AutoCAD copy with base point and paste those assets in. You see it picks it up as an asset in the same way. Let's do a save. Let's synchronize with Inventor. I'm not going to check it in just yet, so I'll say no to the check-in. I shall let Inventor update first of all. You can see instantly the architectural model is pulled in, the layout is changed, and everything's looking pretty good. Let's just finish this off with a couple of changes from inside Inventor. Just go into a top view perhaps, and let's just make a couple of changes. So let's go to our factory, let's go to um, our palettes and open up our asset browser. Let's just get that floating over here. Got an issue with the machine, it's just uh, slightly too close to the wall. So I'm going to pick up all of these assets. With all of these assets collect, connected or, or selected, sorry, I'm going to reposition them. We have the ability to um, align the triad. doesn't really matter where it is, I'm just going to stick it there. And then with that triad selected, we can select a rotation or a movement axis to grab and move that. Let's just give it a bit of room behind the back, like so. We can see that the 2D layout stays the same because we haven't yet resynchronized with AutoCAD. So let's just come in here and just make a couple of additional changes. Um, let's just go on back to System Assets, go into General, and let's just add this chap next to the machine. And let's just add this lady over here like so I'm happy with that so I'm going to say save it I'm going to synchronize it back to AutoCAD once that's synchronized back into um, CAD I'm just going to say yes I would like to open it with AutoCAD before I go any further, check everything in from Inventor. Go back into AutoCAD. Doesn't seem to have synchronized for some reason. Let's just. Uh, Close that and just press sync again. Let's move my uh, let's move my changes. Let's just go ahead and reposition them once more. Apologies about that. Let's just move them down like so. Let's 
save it send my changes back to AutoCAD open those changes in AutoCAD that's better save and check in So there we go, we've um, gone from an ex external contractor using Buzzsaw into an internal data management system using Vault. We've been able to open the file in not just AutoCAD, but XREF it into AutoCAD, and then link that directly to Autodesk Inventor using Factory Design Suite. Go through a few um, round trips along the way, so from Inventor back to AutoCAD, from AutoCAD back to Inventor, and throwing in a complete back to the external contractor, again using Buzzsaw, um, to complete the process. Just uh, just to point out, if we go back to the uh, the web client, let's give it a refresh, just to see once again those versions being controlled inside of uh, inside of Bustle. So if we go to the document details, we can see we have full version control directly inside of, uh, of Bustle. We have the ability to view the file directly inside of Bustle takes a couple of seconds the first time you open it and again it is dependent on your browser and internet connection but it allows you to view the files directly in Bustle which is fantastic. We have a really easy to use thin client inside of Bustle as well as a more advanced thick client which makes the administration procedure generally a little bit more straightforward um, because all of the uh, administration is GUI based it makes it uh, a lot easier to go in and assign users and give them certain permissions so for example you can go into um, the architect user you can say he's got assigned permissions at the minute so I can edit his permissions so he's currently on this as a view if I give him actual access rather than assign permissions if we go to our permissions we then get a very easy to understand GUI based system where we can find our folder within a project and we can say who has view permissions who has admin permissions so on and so forth who can deposit files who can edit files who can review so you can completely and relatively easily um, set up a very robust security system. So that's a, a really quick overview of um, Buzzsaw and Vault. The final thing I want to point out is that we do have even the ability um, inside of this workflow to say, okay, we have the architectural layout there, great, and we will be able to send it to and from Buzzsaw, but we haven't even touched today on the ability to do life cycles inside of Vault, which is quite standard with Vault Workgroup and above. What a lifecycle allows you to do is change the state of a file with inside of Vault to match um, your manufacturing release process or your architectural approval process or whatever it might be. You get a few out of the box in Vault but they are completely customizable um, and all I want to point out at this stage is with Project Sync for Autodesk Vault we have the ability to go in and customize these lifecycles to create checked out to buzzsaw states. For example, we could have an external approval where at that point a file is synchronized directly to buzzsaw and checked out to buzzsaw so it cannot be edited by anyone but the relevant buzzsaw users. Once it goes through its approval process in the buzzsaw site using the workflows we saw earlier, it would be sent back in and checked back in to Autodesk Vault with the relevant comments, um, version numbers, etc, etc. So external approvals, external edits, um, external work in progresses, we have the ability to do it with, uh, with Buzzsaw and Vault.
So that's it for what I want to show you for today. Um, hopefully that's been useful to, to see the workflow. Um, catch you next time.